Okay, so in this video, we will look at convolution for uh, discrete time systems. Okay, convolution for discrete time systems. So for a discrete time system, what we're saying is we have some input and that input is discrete, okay? And it's going to a system and that system has an impulse response and we'll use letter H to represent the impulse response. And from that system, once that input goes in and interacts or the system here processes it using the impulse response here, we get an output Y of N, a discrete output, okay? So the thing is about this, okay, is that for this system, we cannot just simply multiply these two together in order to get this if we're in the time domain. We can do that if we're in the frequency domain, we can do that if we're in the S domain, we can do that if we're in the Z domain, but because we're in the time domain, we cannot do that. What we need to do is we need to do the convolution of that. So that's X of N, and we use a star here to represent convolution, H of N, which is equal to Y for n, okay? Now, so what exactly is a convolution? So we, I just use that term, convolution. What is convolution? Or what do we mean when we say we're convolving uh, a signal, okay? So what we mean is, and I'm gonna write this out fully, so we're saying y of n is equal to, again, x of n, convolved with H of N, and that is equal to the summation of K from negative infinity to infinity of X of K, H of N minus K, okay? Or we can also say that's or, we can also say that this is equal to the summation of k from negative infinity to infinity of h of k, x of n minus k, okay? So what does this actually mean to us? What does this mean to us? Well, this portion right here where we have the minus k's, okay? What that means is that we're flipping and I'm gonna explain that graphically. We're flipping the data or the signal or the uh, impulse based off of which one we're using. We're flipping that uh, with respect to time, okay? And I'll show you what that means graphically in a bit. And also something else that you'll notice that I did here is I had, uh, or I placed X of K here and I placed X of N minus K here. And what this just simply means, we, we can just switch those around. I intentionally did that. So the convolution uh, obeys the associative property. Okay. All right, so that's two things that you need to know. Now let's uh, talk about why that's a flip, okay? So what I want you to do when you're thinking about why in the world did he say that's a flip? Okay, so think, when I say flip, think flip, and that's because, oops, let's suppose we have um, H of minus K here, okay, and that's because we're saying that N is equal to zero, right? So that means then that time then has been shifted, okay? or not shifted, pardon me, but it's been flipped in time, okay, because of the negative sign that's in front there, okay? So let's consider um, an example, and I'm gonna use a fresh paper for this one so we have enough space for this. So we're gonna consider this uh, following example. So we wanna, and I'm gonna go ahead and write that, consider this example. Okay, in this example, we have some signal X of N, okay, and that oops, 
and I'm gonna draw this out graphically here because uh, I like to do convolution graphically. So at time t equals zero, x of n is gonna have a value of one. At time t, or not t, but n, pardon me, is equal, when it's one, we're gonna have a value of two. And when we're at two, we're gonna have a value of three, okay? If we pass that to a filter, and that filter being h of n, and we're going to use a simple filter, and you may recognize this, may or may not, as a HAR filter, and that's h a, let's use capital, h a a r filter. Okay, so that's uh, zero, it's going to be one there, and at time one, and let me go ahead and indicate that this is time here. At time one is going to have a value of one. Everywhere else is going to be zero. Okay, so let's say those are the two, the filter and the data that we're, the signal that we're going to convolve. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip H of N, okay? And if I flip H of N, that becomes... the following signal so you flip it about the zero axis or the zero uh, time okay flip it about zero so it was on this side and it went over to this side here so the, both of these are one and again this is h of n all right if i'm flipping or if i flip that uh, so it was h of n so now it's h k to the minus right and this would be then, this would then be K, okay? So that's minus K here, minus K. All right, so now that we flip that, we're going to convolve that with our original signal, and that signal we're using K is still one at zero, two, at one and three at two okay so now that we've done that what you'll notice is that the only two places where we have the two uh of them h and x having uh data if you will okay is at this point here at time uh zero okay so we're going to multiply the two of them just as the de definition indicates okay so multiply two of them so this ends up being then our y of n uh, let's go ahead and say y when it's zero because we haven't done any shift yet okay y of zero and the n becomes a shift by the way so y of zero then ends up being equal to i'm going to use one from here multiply by one from here and so y of zero is going to be one okay so now let's go on so in this case now this is going to be shifted okay so this becomes one minus k and so it's been shifted or moved to here so this is now one and it's now over here so that's zero and this is also one okay and we're multiplying and adding that to, again, our original signal, which says one here, uh, two here, and three here, right? One, two, and three, okay? So when we go ahead and uh, convolve them together now, so this is gonna be one times one, so this is uh, y of one, by the way. So that's one times one, which is one, of course, but I'll go ahead and write that. And this is two times one, so we have to add that. That's two, or let's go one times two, so we keep the order here. So that's one times two, okay? And so y of n then is equal to one plus two, which is equal to three. Okay, so we do the same thing again. We shift 
So now this goes over and it's now at one and this one is now at two. Oops, is now at two. Make sure that's on the screen. And it, they both still have a height of one. We're still convolving that with our unshifted uh, input signal, which is one, two, and then three. And that's H of, this has been shifted two times, minus K, this is X. Okay, of K, we go ahead and convolve those two together. We end up with Y of two, then it's equal to, and that would be, let's see, so we, we're doing the bottom first, or the bottom last, so that would be one times two, right? Because this is two and this is three. One times two plus one times three. Okay, so y of two then is equal to two plus three, which is equal to five. Okay, let's move over here. So this is h of three minus k. And this one is going to be x of k. This one again, remember, is one, two, and three. This one now is going to be, so it's been shifted now by three times. And so now it's going to be at two and with a height of one here. Okay, and that with a height of one, so that's at three. And this is again, zero, one, and two in terms of the time. Okay. So now I'm going to write this below. What we end up with is that it only overlaps right here. Okay. So that means Y of three. Okay. Y of three is equal to, so this is three at this point times one, three times one. And that's the only two parts where, uh, two places where it overlaps, right? Okay, that's the only place where it overlaps, so the result is three. Okay, so if we look at the answer for this then, the result from all of this convolution, okay, and I'm going to write it in here. So for y of n, for y of n, we end up with a signal of at time n equals zero, it's equal to one. At time n equals one, okay, and this should have been a one. At n equals one, it's equal to three. And at n equals two, it's equal to five. And then at n equals three, it's equal to three again. Okay? So it's one, three, five, three. Okay? All right. So one thing that you'll notice here is that we started off with a signal that had three values. We had a impulse response that we're multiplying it by or, or convolving it with, and that had two. So that's five plus two, or pardon me, three plus two, see I'm ahead of myself, three plus two, and then minus one, and that should tell us we have enough here. So that's five, that gives us four. So our result should have four samples in it. Okay, four samples in it. The number of samples from this, plus the number of samples from this, pardon me, plus number of samples from this uh, would give you, a uh, minus one then would give you uh, your final result of how many samples you should have. Okay, so this has been a, a, a description of how to do convolution in the discrete time system. Please check my YouTube channel for more. 
information.